Today's episode is sponsored by Ruli. If you're looking for a cute new outfit for your next bookstore run or just to cozy up with your current fall read, Ruli is for you. Ruli is our go-to women's clothing shop, offering original items as well as pieces from a variety of brands, including free people. They have so many options and launch new styles every week. I'm almost always wearing something from Ruli. They have so many staple items and I'm currently loving their selection of cozy matching sets. As we go into fall, one of my favorite fall staple items that I wear almost every single day is the Elvis boots from Ruli. They are the cutest and they come in a few different colors. I love their selection of free people items. I'm a big free people fan and I also love their selection of fall sweaters this season. Head over to Ruli.com and use code read at checkout to get 15% off. That's code READ to get 15% off your entire order. Step into the bookstore or just lounge on your couch in style with the latest items from Ruli. All right, welcome back to All Read What She's Reading. I'm Reggie. I'm Michaela, And I'm Kennedy. And today we have a very special guest, the queen of booktube herself, Sarah Caroli. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited right now. Oh, we're so excited excited. to have you here. And I'm sure all of our listeners are going to be absolutely thrilled. It's an honor. Yeah, No, it's an honor to me. I've been listening to you guys for, I don't even know when I found your podcast. But I found you guys on like Spotify first, like audio. So like I had to put faces to names and I found your TikTok and like got to know every. I've been... I know the lore. I've been here for a while. I'm obsessed with you guys. Oh, you're so nice. (laughs) We've had a few people like when you'll mention us in youtube videos people will be like oh my gosh sarah coley <laughs> talked about you on your youtube i think you talked about us on your podcast once yeah. mm-hmm. and someone sent it to us and i remember sending it to these two and i was like <laughs> oh my gosh they talked about us we were fangirling so yeah. hard so we're yeah. honored that you listen to us Stop. yes I, I love your podcast and your dynamics you guys are all like besties it's just so good <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Well, ditto to you too, because (laughs) you're, it's so fun to, we've been trying to get on our YouTube game a little bit, but you're just the queen. Yeah, you're the queen. So thank you. (laughs) Your videos are so fun and I love the way you go about everything. I think it's just so fun. The way you edit it too makes it so entertaining to watch. I could sit and watch your videos all day long. Thank you guys. (laughs) That's so nice. Thank you. It's just fun to sit and yap about books, right? Oh, yes. yeah. Uh, so we're going to just get started with just a just to see what's going on in the life of Sarah right now. What book are you currently reading? I'm currently reading two books right now because I didn't know what I was in the mood for. I started The Zodiac Academy, which I know you guys were talking about recently. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah. I started the second book. I don't really know... I don't have really many feelings. The first book is just like, just like a, a vibe, like not much happens. So I don't really know if I'm going to like <laughs> it. So I decided to start the second one and see. And then it's also such a long series. So I don't know, but I started the second one recently. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, and I also started The Wingman. Um, it's part of like an oh. ice hockey romance series. The second one mm-hmm. I really enjoyed. Really liked it, but forgot the name. The first one's Behind the Net. <laughs> um okay yeah but it's just like a fast pace like the chapters i read on my kindle they're all on kindle unlimited and the chapters are like five minutes max so i feel like i'm reading it very oh, fast love that <laughs> adding love that. that we mm-hmm. love that i love short chapters so oh, yeah. much i don't know yeah. why it just feels like you're cruising <laughs> yeah yeah so i have both of yeah. those going so on a fantasy and a romance usually i don't do two at a time but this feels feels right yeah do so, you oh sorry zodiac academy is wild I've yeah. only listened to the first one, but yeah, it's yeah, it's something. It is, and I went into it not knowing really what it was about, and it's just, I guess, not what I expected, but that's on me for not looking it up. But I usually go into books kind of blind, so I didn't want to know, but it's not yeah. at all what I expected. <laughs> no, I went into it blind, too, and I literally didn't even know it was, like, fantasy. No, me too. <laughs> I was like, there's fae in this? What? I have mm-hmm. no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Magic? Um, I thought it was just going to be like an academic like yeah. book where they're at a college. Every paranormal you can That's think it. of in that book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. true. 
Pat yeah, I need, to, I need to read it. Yeah, I'm interested, I'm, to, I'm interested to know how you'll feel about it. People love it. We'll see. That's the thing. Like people are like obsessed with it. So I just need to understand the hype a little. I want to continue. See if I I like it as much. Yeah, yeah. I just keep pe- I keep seeing people sobbing after mm-hmm. I don't know what book in the series, but like hysterical. Yeah. And in my head, I'm thinking, what in the world in this book is making you cry this much? I, I, I don't know. I know. I, there has yeah. to be some great character development somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. I'm making mental note to add that <laughs> up to my TBR. Uh, do you usually physically read books? I know you said Ken- you have Kindle Unlimited. Do you listen to books as well? Or um, what is your reading style? I feel like I mostly will read... Actually... I don't know, I'm 50 50 like physical or Kindle. If I have the option, like Kindle Unlimited or Libby, to get it on my Kindle, like I'm probably going to do that. I just feel like I'm faster on my Kindle. I think it's just a mental thing. I don't know if I'm actually reading mm-hmm. faster, but it feels like I am. Um, audiobooks, I usually audiobook if I'm doing something like I'm driving, going somewhere and I need to listen or I want to listen. Or if I'm not into a book, I'll audiobook it because some- that sometimes helps. Or if I can't picture things, audiobook usually helps. But I feel like I'm mostly physical. I want to say that, but I, I, maybe Kindle. One of those two. I'm definitely mostly reading on physical or Kindle. But audiobook, I like them because they help me picture things. But I feel like I'm that's like the the bottom of the list. The last resort. Yeah. 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 We do all. Well, right now I feel like we're all listening to a majority yeah, I can't books. remember the last time I really sat down <laughs> and read a book, unfortunately, but I'm a Kindle girly mm-hmm. and I'm with you on, there's something about the mental thing of sitting down and reading on your Kindle that makes you feel like you're reading faster. Yeah. And it's kind of like a game to see if I can yeah. finish the chapter before it says I'm going <laughs> exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's just mm-hmm. fun that it tells me how long I'm, how long left in the chapter, the percentage. Like, I just like knowing because I just, I want to count the pages in the, like, I could do it physically, but. Kindle, it's nice having the yeah. Kindle tell me. Yeah. hundred percent. So tell us a little bit now about how you became a reader and a little bit about your reading journey, because it's just so cool to see how much you've grown, even in like the past little bit. Like, it's just so cool to see with your podcast, with your booktube, all the things. Yeah, I started reading like young, like elementary school, like very young. I had like I read like, you know, like the Boxcar Children or like Magic Treehouse, like those books I would read. But it's interesting because when I think back on it, like I don't remember anything from any book I read before like high school. Like I don't remember anything. I just remember reading like my mom, my little punishments would be like, my mom's gonna take my books away. Like that's what it was. Like I loved reading. Yeah, it's cute thinking. Like I just don't remember anything about the books, but I did love reading when I was younger. And then I think like middle school into high school, I stopped because it was like uncool or like I found other hobbies. I danced until I graduated high school. So I was doing a lot of other things and I just stopped reading. And then I feel like I started again the year before, maybe like 2019. I was transferring like colleges. All my friends were away. It was like that year. I think it was like 18, 19. And I had no hobbies at that point. Like I had nothing to do with by myself and I needed something. So that's kind of when I, started or wanting to make my channel and then also needed more hobbies so i had i had books on my shelves i have no idea where they even came from but i would start reading them like the most random books and then COVID happened i think a lot of people started reading again and that's when i found like book talk was a thing booktube was a thing started watching people read i thought that was the coolest thing and then i found recommendations through that so then it kind of grew from there like i found like kind of like a taste in books and what i liked and i guess that's how i started reading again and it just has not stopped like i just don't remember a time i didn't have a book kind of in my hand like sometimes i'll stop reading and i'm just like need a book going at all times yeah you're like who yeah. am i without a book yeah. no I, I don't even know i think about it all the time like people who don't read i'm like what are, what do you guys do <laughs> what are your hobbies yeah so now um always reading what when did you start your like book tube or like where did you get the idea to just like start? Mm-hmm. Did you just like see other people doing it? You're like, I think I could do that too. Or how? Did, what was your process behind that? Um, well, like I said, I watched BookTube. I like would randomly find people that didn't. I thought it was so cool that people like I didn't know BookTube was a thing or like BookTok. When I found all of that, I thought it was so cool. Um, but I didn't want to make book videos because I was making like 
I was doing like different kind of trends or like vlogs and hauls and stuff like that. But like in those vlogs, I would like talk about a book, like what I was reading at the time. And I would get comments, people saying like, make book videos or can you make like a recommendations video? And I thought no one was going to like them. So I was like, I'll post an Instagram story. Like I'll recommend you over there. Like I didn't want to make like a dedicated video. I didn't think anyone was going to watch it. But then I think at that like one point I read enough books like recently to like make like a full video. So like, you know, I'll just do one. I was just like, whoever's asking can watch this one. So it was like, I think like a, I don't know what it was called, but it was like a book recommendations video, but it wasn't even recommendations. It was just like, I read like 10 books at that point. I put them all into one video. And <laughs> I said, if I liked it or not, like, I don't know. I didn't really know how to go about it, but I made that one video and it did like really, really well. And I was completely shook, like so, so shook. And then I found out there was like a whole community of people. And then people found that video from the booktube side of it and then I kind of started through that but I still didn't like post a lot of book videos I was doing like maybe one a month but then it was just really fun like being able to do like what I love doing which is was reading at the time and having people to talk about it with because I didn't have anyone like in my life reading that was fun so then I like slowly started making more because they were just really fun to like film and make and like talk to people with like about them so somehow it morphed into just doing book videos I mean I still do like some lifestyle but yeah like slowly just started making book videos and they're just they were just really fun to do and like having like a community was fun so yeah like slowly went into it now it's like mostly what I do obviously I love it I feel like the book community is just like so tight like you can Mm -hmm. there's always someone you can talk to about a book Mm -hmm. which I think is so fun yeah like the amount of people that I feel like live a totally different life than me or are very different than who I might be. And then I can sit and talk to him about mm-hmm. a book and I'm like besties right there, yeah. you know? <laughs> so yeah, that's really cool. And it's cool to see like the snowball effect of it. And I mm-hmm. kind of feel like there's a lot of people out there. Cause I know we get messages. I'm sure you get a ton of people saying like, I want to start mm-hmm. a book podcast or I want to start a book tube channel. And I feel like it's this is just like a prime example of like you kind of just do it and see what happens and it kind of just snowballs from there. Yeah. So yeah, that's so cool. And then when did you start your podcast? It, it, like what was the time frame of like we booktube started, to podcast? Um, I, I was doing booktube for probably over a year, maybe two years, I think at that point. And then me and Destiny, well, Destiny had, I do a, the podcast for anyone who doesn't know with, with destiny who also yeah. does book too yeah. but we i think she had her own podcast she had me on her podcast and then after we filmed that like we turned the mics off and i was like that was like really fun and i was like what if we just did it together like as a joke and like it turned out like not really a joke like we texted our managers like that day and we're like so what do we do if we want to like combine this um and then that kind of just started it, w- it happened really fast um that's and, so cool yeah we just wanted to talk and make a podcast and talk and like communicate with our audience together because i feel like we have a very similar audience and we're obviously like very close like best friends and wanted to like start something like that it's we talk about books we talk about other things we just like yeah you know it's fun (laughs) well no i i love that about your podcast because it genuinely just feels like you're sitting listening to two best friends talk about whatever they want to that (laughs) week and i love that you guys sprinkle in a little bit of books because like you guys don't only just read. You have so much more going on mm-hmm. inside your lives. Mm-hmm. So it's cool that you guys are able to talk and bring that sort of depth to your audience mm-hmm. about you guys, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's really, really fun. That's one of like the best things that's come from this. Like we said, like the community, but like making friends through the books is so fun because it's all online social media. Like I have, would never have met anyone in real life if it wasn't for it. So it's been really, really fun. Yeah, did you and um Destiny meet like over social media first? Yeah. 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 We like I guess we're both making like the book content. I think I like DM'd her and then we followed each other and it just like started from there and then we met up once and like ever since then. That's been so fun. Real close. So did you guys know you like live do you guys live closer together? No. Well when we met she was in Indiana, so that's like not too far okay. from where I am. It's like I think like an hour and a half flight, but now she's in Texas where I was recently and that's like a little bit further. So we travel to see each other. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. 
Well, it's so funny because kind of like what Reggie was saying, it really is such a big snowball effect because I originally, so we're all photographers and I always watch YouTube videos while I edit. And I used to watch Haley Fam a lot. And then Haley started doing just her straight up book channel. And then from there, I found you. And then from you, I found Destiny. So it's like just this kind of snowball effect of just finding all of these really fun book tube creators. And genuinely, it just feels so like to sit and edit on my computer and then have you guys playing. Mm -hmm. It feels so cozy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing. Any task I'm doing, I'm just putting my laundry. Like I'm playing a book video. Anything on my recommended or book podcast, like I have it always going at all times it's my favorite thing it makes life so much better <laughs> <laughs> no it does not only do we have books to read but then we have so much content mm-hmm. to consume from all the book reviews and everything going on which is so much fun yeah yeah which is then fun- content to create so yeah. yeah which kind of leads us into our next question and this wasn't mm-hmm. on the list so mm-hmm. we're so sorry that this wasn't on oh, the list okay. but what is your favorite kind of of YouTube video to make? Is it like 24 hour readathons? Is it book hauls? Is it book reviews? TBRs? Um, What's your favorite? Uh, I think not 24 hour readathons. Not that. <laughs> Unless it's like sometimes I'll do it like in the span of days, but trying to like physically read for that long, I just, I just does not end well. Um, I would say probably <laughs> just like a good old reading vlog. I think it's fun to. I usually do things where like something will pick the books I'm reading. Like that's always really fun because it makes it like cr- feel creative in a way. Um, so yeah, I would just say like a reading vlog, just picking three ish books for a video and reading them and talking about them or TBR videos. Those are my favorite to watch and also film mm. just because they're fun. You just never know what you're going to get like a little TBR jar picks your reads, but probably just like a good, a good reading vlog. I just like to vlog like aside from it. I talk about books in my vlogs too, but yeah probably a reading vlog that's so fun i we're really bad uh vlogging <laughs> like so yeah bad. what <laughs> tips do you have <laughs> <laughs> honestly you didn't know you're gonna pick your brain i just kind of will find anything to yap about i think vlog the thing is i think when you're making a vlog it feels like you're gonna you start talking like no one cares what i'm listening to but like i will listen to someone talk about anything in a vlog or do anything so you're just day to day whatever you're doing honestly someone is gonna enjoy it and find comfort in it i love vlogs that's one of my other things that i love to watch also just like a long vlog so i don't really know how many tips i got i just think you just gotta you just gotta yap about whatever you're thinking (laughs) Well, we can yap. We, we know can we can yap. do that. So <laughs> <laughs> we probably talk too much. It's okay. I feel like I feel sometimes awkward when I vlog. Did you ever feel like awkward when you first started? Because oh, you're like, I'm yeah. talking to a camera and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, I have so many old videos just privated now because I would wa- rewatch them back and just like, it's. I know, but uh, ever, it's hard because you're it's, you're just like not used to talking to a camera, so it's just you just can tell. But after, yeah, you probably get good practice. Yeah, yeah. After a time, it's like I'm talking to like a friend. Like my boyfriend will come behind the camera and he just like clams up a little. You just have to get used to it. I think if you're just behind the camera more often, it almost just seems like no one. Like, you're, I'm kind of just talking to myself <laughs> at that point. <laughs> That's kind of how it feels. And I'm editing sometimes, and I'm like, I just I go in. You like have to cut them out, but I just, I just talk. I think the more you do it, the easier it gets, and I feel like there's no camera there. Okay, those are a good tip. We're writing these all down <laughs> for when we vlog next. Do you ever go back and watch like your old videos, like any of the old videos, even just your vlogs, oh. and feel like it's just this video diary of your life? <laughs> um, I will sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to watch them back because it's just I don't know. But specific like vlogs, like birthday vlogs, or like things that I like to capture for kind of myself in a vlog and posting to like look back on like those I like to watch like I have like my 19th birthday posted and it's just like interesting Mm -hmm. to see like what I was doing then but like actual videos I don't I try not to rewatch them I just like cringe at myself (laughs) (laughs) do you oh sorry well I was just gonna say it's like our first few podcast episodes I'm almost like don't go listen to them (laughs) you know but Mm -hmm. it's it just goes to show that yeah the more you start doing things because i think about the first time we even sat down to podcast it's like it felt comfortable and it was fun that's why we kept doing it Mm -hmm. but it's cool to see 
how much better we've gotten and how much more comfortable we feel as time goes on. And so I feel like that's great advice just in anything you do even throughout life. So Go ahead. no i was gonna ask do you edit your own content like for or do you like send it off to someone i don't know i edit well for the podcast destiny edits that and then all my content like on youtube i edit myself i've always edited mine i feel like i will always i just want it takes a lot of time it's a lot of time consuming to edit but it's fun because you can like be creative with it but also i like editing sometimes it's it, time consuming like it takes a lot of time but i think i'll always edit my own i can't see myself getting an editor yeah that's super cool i'm should, a videographer so i do a lot of video editing and i mm -hmm. understand yeah. hiring out someone to do, you're like no i want the creative control yeah but i think that's really cool for people to know that everything yeah that you're putting out it's all coming straight from you so that's yeah. super cool yeah i was just curious because i feel like sometimes when i because we all take turns editing the podcast and like youtube video and sometimes like why did i act like that or say that i sometimes it's like hard to watch back and listen to yourself so i was curious if sometimes you're like what was i doing oh, <laughs> all the time all the time i'll watch things back i'll usually send it to destiny and we'll just like laugh over it because i'm just like why yeah we I do that, that too <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was so fun okay i think um let's transition into asking some of like your favorites for things so what do you think is your favorite we'll say top three books okay. we're making it hard <laughs> <laughs> this was hard because i uh, uh, okay top, okay hold on i have favorite series so okay top of all time is like magnolia park series i feel like i've never shut up about that but if i had to pick a book from the series i think i would have to say that the most recent one into the dark like that's that's up there that's probably one of my favorites and then i i would i'd have to pick an emily henry book because i love emily henry and it used to be well i don't know happy place and beach read are very much tied but I most recently read Happy Place again. So I'm going to say Happy Place. I think. I'm, yeah. I'm going to stick with Happy Place. And then a third. Oh, God. I'm like staring at my bookshelf. <laughs> so it's hard. an impossible it question. Is. It is. Okay. But I think I'm going to go with Throne of Glass. Which I, know you, I know you guys love too. But my favorite from Throne of Glass. Um... Oh gosh. I think I'm going to say Queen of Shadows. Mm, that's underrated. a good one. I yeah. think that's yeah. so underrated. That was, I think I was loving the series as I was reading it, but like after Air of Fire, like I, I was like, yeah, no, this is really good. Um, yeah, I think those are my top three. I love that's it. a good top yeah, three. That's solid. <laughs> yep. Great taste. Very well. I mean, you already know you have good taste, but yeah. well rounded, solid love all of those books i think we all love those books mm -hmm. yeah we yep. do into the into the dark changed my brain chemistry no. so yeah i've never seen yeah. character development than like that series <laughs> mm -hmm. it's great so would those books like your top three books correlate to your favorite authors um i definitely emily henry i mm -hmm. don't think i would i don't know like i love magnolia parks like as her writing and characters but i think i would put like oh gosh i don't know and i don't know if saturday like i don't it's hard because i usually will pick books not really based off the authors i'll just like if it's a series i want to try mm -hmm. or a book but i don't think they'd be in my top three other than emily henry would definitely i think i would throw in like abby jimenez like my auto buy authors like i probably will never miss a book by her again because she's just mm -hmm. so good um or like Elsie Silver. I love Elsie Silver and her series. Like I always, whatever book's coming out, I'm reading. But also like if Sarah J. Mass comes out with another book, I'll probably read it too. So <laughs> that's yeah. hard. I don't really know. <laughs> so many books, well, so many authors. You just named your few auto buy authors, yeah. which I think is great. I think it's sometimes hard to pick a favorite author mm -hmm. oh, yeah. because there are some authors I'm like, if they come up with a book, I am immediately reading. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I can pick out my favorite ones because yeah. there's too many good ones. I don't it's know. It's hard. Sorry, we asked you an impossible question. No, that's okay. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. So would you say like based off of your answers, you're more of like a romance? Do you like romance more than you would probably like fantasy or fantasy romance? Yeah, I think it's hard because I really like I've gotten more into fantasy and like romantic the past like year ish. So I do like picking those up. I feel like because we're I would okay, I would say I'm romance, just like a clear answer, but <laughs> I feel like I'm growing into and like trying to read from all different genres and I'm expanding into those. But yeah, I would say contemporary romance is what I'll always fall back on. Like the comfort genre is definitely contemporary mm-hmm. romance, but I do like my romance. Well, There's it, nothing like it. <laughs> contemporary romance is just you know exactly what you're gonna get. Yeah. And it's just cozy and they're usually good yeah you know yeah they're they're so fun too yeah i think because most of my favorite books i would probably say would fall more into just like romance genre yeah so yeah well and i feel like with romance it's one of those that i it takes a lot for me to get really sick of it but like with Mm -hmm. fantasy i always need a little break in between yeah the fantasy books that I read because they're just usually a little more heavy and dense and long. And so I'm like, I need a little palate cleanser. Yeah. And then I'll probably like read four romance books in a row and then go back <laughs> to a fantasy book. So I feel like romance is always there is like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just, like it's just always there. Yeah. 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 It's just always there. Yeah. You know, you're going to pick up a good romance book. There's always good romance. It never books. feels too daunting. No. Whereas like, Picking up a thriller or a fantasy book can feel a little more daunting because you're like, okay, I got to buckle up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially fantasy. There's so, just a long, a long series I have to get into. And yeah, I think I'm just like a hopeless romantic. Like, I just love seeing people fall in love. Like, I just think it's so fun. And it's so cute. <laughs> it never, it really never gets no. old. Yeah, yeah, it really doesn't. Really? Well, and we, we shoot weddings yeah. for our job. And so we just get to see people f- in love mm-hmm. all the time and i i mean we all never get sick of it i feel like so it's just fun to hear about fake people's <laughs> <laughs> romance and then it's also fun hearing about real people's yeah. romance you get to live so many different lives in these books with them it's so fun mm-hmm. i know as we have done our job i feel like we've come up with a bunch of we would never write a book. At least I would never write a book because it would not go well. <laughs> um, but I feel like I have a bunch of ideas in my mm-hmm. head just based off like, oh, this interaction was really cute. Mm-hmm. What if I wrote a scene of like this? But I'm like, someone should write this. Not me, but someone else should yeah, write it. <laughs> I think about that all the time. I don't think I could ever write a book, but I, I can come up yeah, with I was just going to ask you if you feel like you could ever write a book <laughs> uh, and you don't think you could. No, I was never good at writing, even in school. Like it was hard to get me to write like my essays. I do not think I would even be good at, no. Writing books and like seeing how these authors can do and write what they write. I just, my thoughts cannot be articulated like that onto paper, but I got ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I would love to jump into so many authors' brains Yeah, because I know fantasy is a lot more complex, but like specifically with romance, even then I'm like, how are you writing these beautiful, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just really cool. Every time I'm reading, I always catch myself being like, where did they come up with this? How did they write this? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think anyone could write a book if they wanted to for sure. Hmm. But (laughs) no, it just seems, it doesn't mean like, I don't know. I just can't. I can't fathom. So, <laughs> no, me neither. Maybe you should write all these ideas down and then sell it <laughs> to an author. <laughs> I want like, to have a ghostwriter. I have a little <laughs> note. Like, yeah. I, when oh, I think of something, I'll, cool. I'll I write it that. down. I think it's because I think it's fun. Like, uh, maybe one day someone will write this into a book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should. I, have, have you ever met any of your favorite authors? Um, yeah, I've been to a couple like um book signings. I met Elsie Silver, who was a really big one I was really excited for. I met Lucy Score a few years ago, which Ooh. when I first got back into reading, I really liked her and her books. I haven't read one in a while, but um Oh, Stephanie Garber when the third book came out, I went to that book signing. Um I can't remember. 
I didn't meet Lauren Roberts, but I went to her midnight release and saw like her Q and A. So that was really cool. But yeah, I'm like lucky to be by the New York big barn and they always have like cool <sighs> signings going on. So I try to get to those. So jealous. <laughs> the last time I went to New York, I wanted to go there so bad and we never were just in that part. Ugh. But how fun that we you live to. that close. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. It's the coolest barns ever. We don't have much like that here. So oh. no. It's the biggest one uh, in the United States, isn't it? Yeah, it's like four floors, I think. It's really big. It's like huge. You guys have to go one day. Uh, I want to. We need to make a book trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our on our bucket list. Yeah. So this is kind of jumping around a little bit. What is your favorite book by Elsie Silver? I I think Reckless <laughs> from the Chestnut Springs. It okay. was Powerless, but mm -hmm. I recently read Reckless. It's Theo in Winter, and it's Theo is just like an iconic man. So <laughs> that one's probably my favorite. I, I just read Powerless a few weeks ago, so mm -hmm. Reckless is next, right? Yeah, yeah, Reckless is after that. I feel like if you haven't enjoyed, if anyone hasn't enjoyed the first, was it like three? Is Reckless the fourth? reckless will like change your mind like it is so good she did it very right <laughs> i'm excited to read that mm -hmm. i really am it's so good i sh i just finished the first one um and i used it kind of as a palate cleanser in between mm -hmm. fantasy books because i feel like fall is good for fantasy books so i'm trying to get through all of them but i'm like i need it so I'll eventually get to the second one. Mm -hmm. Don't know when, but I will get to it eventually. Mm -hmm. The second one's so <laughs> I live in, favorite. I live in a really, really small town, and there's like this big famous rodeo that it's like my town's claim to fame. And I read, is Flawless the first one? Yes. I read Flawless around the same time that the rodeo came. Oh, so God. all the bull riders were coming out, and I was just like, no, that's perfect. Living in my Chestnut Springs life. Yeah. Every time I read a small town <laughs> romance, I'm like, I. I wish I lived in one. I wish I was over there. <laughs> don't, don't, Ashley, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> uh, romance books are really good at setting the scene, though, for small town romance because, I don't know, if anyone listening lives in a small town that's like the ones in romance books where everyone knows each other and takes care of each other, and you know what I mean? I'm like, I want to I wanna visit. Yeah. I want to get in my car. I want to drive. I want to yeah, visit. Time. Come but, over to my house. But like... <laughs> Yeah, but like, you know what I mean? Like, the yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. almost feels like the small town romances that I feel like I've read, they almost feel so small that I'm like, is this just like one street? Or, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's some, we did like an episode recently where we talked about, was it Would You Rather? Or, oh, it was when we did um, the Ashley. Oh. oh, and we were asking like, if you could put yourself in any romance book world, what would it be? And we all picked one that had like a small town. Yeah. Why are you, what would you pick? Yeah. Oh gosh. Any romance. I don't. Oh God. I, um, I think they, We're really just putting you on the spot. No, this is good though. It's <laughs> making me think. I think they really know how to romanticize a small town. Makes me want to go oh, to yeah. one. I, I probably would pick Chestnut Springs. Like, Give me the small town, the cowboys, and <laughs> all the besties, all the girls. I think that would be really fun. That's the one I picked. I picked Chestnut Springs. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. What, what did you guys pick? I don't remember. I think, didn't you pick Maine from I Happy guess I Place? did pick Happy Place, which wasn't like a small town, but like... Kind of? I did also pick from The Summer Will Be Different. Oh. Um, oh that's kind of yeah. like a little community there. But what would you say is your favorite trope? Mm, I do love a good second chance, but like the the childhood friends lover second chance mm -hmm. for some reason it goes up every single time. And a classic, who did this to you? Like that'll never not yeah. hit. Who did this to you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many good ones. Every single time one shows up, I'm like. That's good. That's yeah. really good. I feel like there's there's not very many tropes that I absolutely hate. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, if it's done well, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I feel like there's only one that I don't like, and that's the cheating trope. I hate yeah. it. Yeah, cheating. That, that's a bad one. Even though my favorite <laughs> series has it, <laughs> but I always get a. That's okay. 
but you know what? Magnolia Parks <laughs> is about so much more than the Chibi yeah. Yeah. Okay, if, if you really make it through is. the first book, it's yeah. way more. It's, yes. No, it's, I agree. Ugh. Yeah, I think you can overlook that. 100%. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah well, and then like not- goes to show that you can have something that maybe a lot of people don't like to read and make it good. Make yeah. it good. You know, which is probably hard to do because that's also one of my probably worst, least favorite tropes. Based off the books you've been telling us, you know, you love. Would you say you associate yourself with those same authors, or when people think of, you know, Sarah Caroli, what would you say? they associate you with i yeah i think i would say magnolia parks but it's also because once i read the first one like i didn't stop talking about it so it's just like that Mm -hmm. probably is one yeah i think i'd say magnolia parks may be powerless by lauren roberts but also i feel like i relate that to many people now so many people love that book yeah i think that i think those are like the top i think (laughs) if i asked I'm pretty sure you were the person that I saw talk about Magnolia Parks first, and that's why I bought the series. Oh, no way. Yeah. So thanks for changing oh, my life you're because so that is one of my favorite series of all time. <laughs> you're so welcome. Yeah, I think Magnolia Yeah, Kennedy Parks. is a person that doesn't stop talking about it either. Oh, I love Magnolia Parks which with one's, my whole heart and soul. Which one's your favorite? Are you a, a Daisy or a Magnolia? Girl? I'm a Magnolia girl, so okay. I have a sister and I also have daddy issues. So well, like just the whole, Magnolia, yeah, Magnolia's whole storyline, I just and oh my gosh, it just tugged at my heartstrings. So I would say I'm more of a Magnolia girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The last but one. I think these two are more of Daisy girls. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you guys read all of them yet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like most people are Daisy. Daisy girls. <laughs> I can I can appreciate Magnolia's storyline a lot. I just love the high stakes with yeah. daisies a lot. So mm-hmm. yeah, same. Are you a magnolia or daisy girl? I'm I'm magnolia girly. I mm-hmm. I like the daisy books. I'm just not. I don't love <laughs> Christian, which I know a lot of people love Christian, but I'm also kind of a Julian girly. Like Great Undoing is like my second favorite. It's like a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We both, Reggie and I, listen to every single book. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you ever are going to reread them, you should try listening to them because they're the voice actors are phenomenal. So good. So, so good. I put on, I think, The Great Undoing. I listened to it in the car one day, but I only listened to Julian's chapters because his voice was like perfect for it. Yeah. <laughs> I have listened to that. So but I good. I haven't listened to anything else on them. Yeah, I think they it made it really fun just because of their accents and they all have kind of like different accents because yeah. they're kind of from different areas. So it was it was fun, but it's a very, very good series. Mm-hmm. Love it. I'm not big into like ta- I don't tab books on anything uh, or anything like that, but that is one series that I would go back mm-hmm. and tab so hardcore just because for the fact of I would love to be able just to open the book and read just to talk about love yeah Ugh. i don't i've never read writing like that series and i reread the first one after finishing and she puts like so many crumbs and i was like how did i not pick up on anything ever so mm-hmm. yeah those were like do you good. to go along with kennedy's question do you annotate books um i think if i'm really loving it i'll annotate i used to be really big into it like when i found out what annotating was like i tabbing everything and underlining and highlighting mm-hmm. everything um but now it's just if i'm really really enjoying it or like i want to remember a quote or take like a picture of a quote or something but i try to more tab so that like in case i like write and then like a bit later i go back and i'm like kind of annoyed that i wrote in my book or like i want to lend a book out um but i I don't find myself annotating as much as i used to right now i'll just like take a picture of the page instead of Mm. writing in it yeah that's what I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I have a million pictures of yeah. random pages in my camera roll and no, I'm like, what is this? Yeah, I'll have <laughs> yeah. so many pictures and I'll just never go back to them sometimes. So they're just sitting there on <laughs> random pages. It's hard. I feel like it's also sometimes can be a little bit distracting because uh, for me, I'm like very much in the world, either mm-hmm. fantasy or romance. And so sometimes to like pause and mm-hmm. like tab or like annotate sometimes takes you out of it so that's why i feel like i never 
do it. And sometimes I'm like reading, I'm like, oh my gosh, two hours have passed and I I didn't even realize that much time has gone by. Yeah. I did that with Into the Dark. I read it fully and then I went back and I annotated it because I didn't want to pause reading it because I loved it so much. Yeah, I feel like that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you probably pick up on more yeah it's more time consuming too though, things hit a little harder yeah yeah oh definitely doing it a second worth time. it Especially yeah so into worth the it. dark right yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, i just started a throne of glass reread and i know i'm probably gonna do some tabs in there knowing everything now yeah yeah That's i know i fun. keep getting um the libby for throne of glass and i'm like i don't know <laughs> if i'm ready to commit to rereading it I really want to eventually. How many times have you read Throne of Glass? Only I read it this time last year. I think last October is when I like started it. Okay. And I just it's one of those series you just don't stop thinking about. So and trying again. I'm doing it very slowly though. I read Assassin's Blade. I started with Assassin's Blade both times and I read that last month. So this month I'm gonna try Throne of Glass and maybe Crown of Midnight. So are you an Assassin's Blade? first girly yeah i know that's really controversial yes! yeah <laughs> no sorry we, sorry. we, oh, okay. we are that way too so i i so the first time i read throne of glass i actually didn't read assassin's blade at all <gasps> don't come for me oh that's crazy um, <laughs> i know it's crazy it is crazy and then well it's just because i am a person who doesn't like to go back in time mm-hmm. very much so like once i started the series i was like i don't want to have to like pause mm-hmm. go back in time before like throne of glass even started to read this series so i was like i'll just skip it <laughs> mistake <laughs> but then the second time around i was like guys you need to read assassin's blade first and this was before i feel like a lot of people had opinions about Mm, when to start it so i was like assassin's blade is first you guys trust me and then everyone had like an opinion no it needs to be i don't know was it third Mm -hmm. fourth i can't i mean it comes first in the box set yes so it does (laughs) and i know i think on her like website or something it's not first like she recommends it differently but in my head it just makes no sense to pause the story and go back like i would not have continued I would have not have wanted to read the next book if I went back and then had to learn about a whole new place in the world. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense to yeah. read first. Also, oh yeah, you, you connect to her so quickly in the yeah. mm-hmm. reading it yeah. first. Yes. Yeah. I definitely no, stand on it, that. <laughs> we support you. <laughs> we support. <laughs> you. Assassin's Blade literally ends where Throne of Glass begins. Yeah. Like it, like, it yeah. makes so much sense. <laughs> it's a great segue. I, yeah. 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 Sorry, I feel very passionate about it, and I'm so <laughs> glad you agree. <laughs> no, I definitely agree. So you've kind of talked about that you're rereading Throne of Glass. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like is your most... For, I know there's not very many months left in the year, mm-hmm. but what on your TBR is your most anticipated read? Mm, this one's hard because I don't know of any... Oh, actually... The next book in The Serpent Wings of the Night, I think, is coming out soon. Really excited mm-hmm. about that. I know you guys were talking about it recently. I also don't remember anything from the other books, but <laughs> the first one I gave See, it, like, I a- feel like I remember a lot, and I'm like, I already, I want to reread it. But I'm like, do I have the time? There's so many other books I want to read. You should listen so hard, to it. But listen to I know. I might need to. I think I gave the second like a four and a half. I have no idea what happens in the second one. So I'll probably have to spark notes that somewhere. And then... We're <laughs> really excited about the new one, though. I don't really know any other books I'm, like, really excited about. I like to do, like, rereads in December, but that's not, like, any new books. I, there's a lot. I have a lot of books on my TBR, but I don't really know. As you should. Yeah, I have to work on that. I'm trying to work on that. I just don't. I don't know if there's any that's, like, I'm most excited for. I think I'm yeah. just... It's like now that I don't have many. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That I don't have many that I'm excited for. Like maybe I'll find a surprise five star. So that will be exciting. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, you said you like, like you reread books a bit. Is there a book you've read like more than twice? I think I've read Love and Other Words three times. Okay. And I think 
No, Be Treated Only Read Twice. And this book, Ghosted by J.M. Darhauer, I randomly talk about it frequently and I read that one. I think three. Yeah. I, I've only done I like two. I don't know if two. I can think of a book I've read more than twice. But I think well, that's awesome. Love in Other Words is it's your second favorite. chance romance. Yeah, right? it's your favorite. It's like, <laughs> it was like the first one I read with that trope and I was like, this is perfect, actually. So mm-hmm. I read that like once a year, at least. It's like a comfort book. When I think of second chance romance, that's the first book that comes to my mind. Yeah. It's Love in Other Words. That's yeah, a good one. It's like that the is blueprint. Really good okay, what was the, the Ghosted? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's by... I'm going to okay. add this to my TBR. It's um also a second chance, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> it's really good. I don't really, I don't really know why I love it so much. I it's it's second chance they met in like high school, but the way it's told is really cool. And like the main guy, he's um a famous actor, and he's like kind of like Marvel, like he's a superhero. It's oh, cute. I'm sold. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sold. You should try. It. It's really good. I'm like kind of obsessed with it, but it's nothing crazy. It's just like it's a good romance. Yeah. Yeah. If you could meet any author, dead or alive, who would you want to meet? Um, okay, this one, I honestly, very answer probably, you probably could have guessed I would say this, but I really think I would love to sit with Jessa and like, I just really want to know how she like comes up with some of the things she writes about and the way she puts words together. Like, I really would love to understand her. Because I've never read. Do you follow like her that. on Instagram? I do. Yes. She is a. <laughs> she's so fun to follow. Yeah. She, mm-hmm. Yeah. Like her. She, <laughs> her Instagram story she posts like the random reels. She she just seems like a really fun person uh-huh. in general. Yeah, I do follow. I do keep up with her stories when she does like Q and A's. Sometimes unhinged. They're very <laughs> fun to keep up with. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would have. Yeah, to. she. Have you read? Never. I haven't by No Kennedy has, but have you read Never? Yeah, I read it. I actually got the arc of it, so I read it right before it came out, but I mm-hmm. didn't really like that one. So that's why I said, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if she's my favorite author. I just know Magnolia Park's my favorite mm-hmm. series. Yeah, But if she yeah. comes out with, like, another book, because I know she's working on other stuff, I definitely would read it, because maybe Never is just not for me. So I didn't love mm-hmm. that one. Did you well, like I it? Feel like... I did give it four stars, but I read it, like, so long after it had come out because after it came out i feel like i was seeing so many people say that they didn't love it and i wanted to like separate myself from that definitely was not as good as magnolia parks but it still had kind of those underlying themes of like just being so infuriated with the people and like the messy toxicity of the first book of magnolia parks is there so there's like things i could see from magnolia parks but it was just it was a it was a wild ride yeah yeah i don't yeah the ending the ending really pissed me off but yeah a lot happened and i just i guess i just didn't i'm not i don't really remember like peter pan like the retelling of like i never really was a peter pan person anyway so like i didn't understand some of the stuff i just don't think maybe the story the characters i don't know didn't love it but Mm -hmm. did read it (laughs) i'm very intrigued to see what this next series is because she's Mm -hmm posted about it now mm-hmm. but we don't really know anything about it yeah i don't it's either. called though hasting hasting's house or something i think that just or might is that be something like a different general page for her stuff because there's a lot i don't yeah, i don't know I think i'm people very intrigued are, are guessing that it'll be um a prequel to them at varley like at their old school like a like how they they met and all of them together is like the set but i have no idea very very discreet over mm-hmm. there have you ever been to london no i i would love that's the only reason i want to go there (laughs) i would love to stand in front of the holland park sign and just take a picture like that's yeah i would like to do i would like to go there someday i it's a far flight but i mean i'm gonna have worth it (laughs) yeah i know i want to well there was a episode where we talked about if we could like trade places with the character for one day (laughs) and i think we also like magnolia just to like (laughs) live that lifestyle or just know what it's like to be in high society london and just have no cares in the world about money and just dress really (laughs) really cool yeah imagine her closet i know just want to go stare at it is insane okay i have to get your thoughts on this because i think i've shared this with them but 
every time they're not exactly perfect but for some reason every time nara and lucky smith come on my for you page all i see is magnolia and bj oh really i don't know why wait that's yeah, really I don't funny know why. <laughs> i don't think i've ever thought about that <laughs> I have no idea why, but every time I see them, I'm like, huh. It's probably because they look very, like, high high class and very, like, yeah, you know. Yeah. I also kind of feel like they're, the way they act with each other, just the very touchy-feely, lovey, but, like, I don't know. There's, like, this kind of sexy undertone to it, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I can see, I can see that, too. So Yeah. Do you have, so like, um... A fan cast for uh, Magnolia and BJ because it was ru- is it turning into a TV show? I, I, I think, think it still is. Picked, I think BBC or no, is it BBC? I don't know. Someone picked it up. Yeah, I don't even. I don't think Jess has ever said anything on it, but I would. I don't know if I would like to. Say, I don't know. I don't have a fan cast though because the one person I picture as Magnolia, I think she's just like a mo- like she's not an actress like she could i don't know if they would hire an actress but yeah it's just a girl i found on pinterest that really reminds me of her um mm-hmm. i don't even know her name that's my problem the pinterest too. models get yeah, us every time every single time i don't even i never know their names but they always look just like them and bj doesn't even have like a face in my head like he's just like some aura like i can see his tattoos <laughs> but no i can't way. see his face so i have no idea what i would picture i don't i just know i just see his tattoos in his vans I don't even know what his face would look like in my head. <laughs> I swear I envisioned him with blonde hair yeah, in same. the first book. And then I feel like his hair was described as brown. Yeah, I think a lot of people picture him with blonde hair. I, I, get, I okay. don't know. I think I would picture him as like a You're light like, I don't know. Brunette. Yeah, I have no idea. Chest down, you know. <laughs> Chest yeah. up, you don't know anything. Yeah, exactly. No, literally. <laughs> I don't know. I think there are quite a few mo- pinterest models yeah. that could do really good. Mm-hmm. yeah i don't know if they could act well but looks wise <laughs> i feel like i also just don't know the pool of actresses or actors it's really hard to look up like actors and actresses because i feel like the same faces show up like, yeah like the a-list celebrities for and i'm like i feel like it'd be kind of nice to have some a little bit un- like newer talent yeah Yeah. Yeah. not well known uh play the faces of them because i feel like it's hard to um separate some actors from other roles and so it'd be fun to like just have them be the face of it yeah i agree i don't even think i know enough celebrities to fan cast anything i'm like i feel like i just don't watch tv or movies anymore because i just read books so no literally Mm -hmm. then it's hard to fan cast anything but all like that adaptations like recent ones like, I watch, like, Hearts Over. Like, they have, like, good... Like, the casting is very good. Like, they've done a good job putting faces to what I would picture. So, I have hopes yeah. for... Do you have a favorite? Out. Do you have a favorite, like, book to movie or TV show adaptation? Um, I think I would either say Normal People, which I read a really long time ago. But it was, like, direct from the book. And then Heartstopper, like, the graphic novels they're like well i guess it's it's easy because you see the picture so it's like you can kind of cast that very similarly but the casting is perfect to those that's awesome are you excited about um emily henry's oh yeah oh people need yeah, to be on vacation yeah, do you I, like the casting of that i think they did such a good job with the casting i watched i think it was called my lady jane is what that actress was in recently i didn't fin- mm-hmm. i love my lady jane i yeah it was good the <laughs> episodes i watched were good and i remember watching it i was like why is she not casted in more things like i wish like she's she just such a good job and then i saw that she was casted for that i was like no this is kind of perfect i'm really excited yeah. for that one i have to reread the book probably because i read it a while ago i don't really remember much but i'm yeah. excited i trust emily henry yeah, I feel like she this being the first book with the with this cast is really setting Emily Henry up for success for oh, her yeah. next stuff she has coming out, which is really exciting. Yeah. So it's a good story. We're crossing our fingers that it's lives I'm, up to our expectations. I'm trying to figure out why Hollywood has taken so long to take all of these really incredible romance novels and bring them to life because we have been needing rom coms. Oh yeah. So yes. No, I agree. So the fact that these romance authors are getting their movies just makes me so happy. Yeah. And I also feel like authors are being a lot more picky with 
like the screenplays, the castings now, I feel like they're a lot more involved. And so I feel confident in almost all of the book to TV adaptations that are coming out. Yeah. Like Powerless, I think is going to be incredible. That's going to be cool. What Crazy. else is the Fourth Wing? Fourth Wing, I think the authors are going to be very involved. Yeah. So Yeah, which I think is how it should be. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's their book. I feel like in the past, yeah. I feel like in the past, people just like, so, authors just sell yeah. the rights to it instead yeah. of like being involved in it. Like classic example is Rick Rodin's Percy Jackson. Mm-hmm. They literally are having to redo the series because the first time around was not at okay. all what like the books were. Mm-hmm. So I think people are just learning that they just need to be a part of the process. Yeah, no, they should <laughs> yeah. be. They 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 made up these characters. I can't wait to see a, the fantasies on the TV. We've gotten the rom com, mm-hmm. seeing like yeah. Alice or Fourth Wing. Like, I can't wait to see how they do that it makes me really nervous but like, yeah. excited <laughs> excited well and even like rebecca yaros i don't know if you guys saw that tiktok i sent you last night mm-hmm. they someone asked her like her fan cast and she's like oh i can't pick a fan cast and she was saying she wants it to be like new like up and coming yeah like new talent for the movies which i thought I feel first like show tv series sense. which is yeah. really cool yeah so we're just putting all our faith into yeah. the authors I'm so excited. Yeah. Well, like we said earlier in the episode, we could yap about books all day. <laughs> Me too. So I feel like we could keep talking, um, but we will wrap it up because we know you got lots to do and lots to read. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you to connect with you, like your handles and stuff? You can find me, Sarah Curley, on everything. I only just have YouTube and Instagram. Goodreads. I'm pretty sure it's just Sarah Curley. I don't. I still don't know how to find people on Goodreads. I don't know why it's so difficult. Um, yeah, <laughs> it should just be Sarah Curley and everything. And then bookmarked is the podcast, which is Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube too. Perfect. We will link all your socials mm-hmm. in the episode description in the show notes. So thank you so <laughs> much. This was so fun yes, for joining you. us. This was way fun. No, it was so. Much Let's fun. do it again sometime. We. I would love to talk love to you your guys again. Everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I had so Yay, much fun. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye.